infrastructure. I'm an American citizen living in Saudi Arabia. I came here in November 2011, not knowing anything about Islam or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Most of what I had heard was extremely negative. In America, our news channels boosted their own air ratings by regularly sensationalizing breaking news of terrorism. Every 30 minutes, one witnessed horrific scenes of bombings and bloodshed and murder. Often one Muslim group fighting against another Muslim group. As killings and beheadings took place, there were always the shouts of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, God is great. I was invited here to Saudi Arabia by Safi Kaskas to work on what was known as the Q Project. Dr. Kaskas wanted to produce a new, easy to read American translation for the next generation of young Americans. Since I could not read or speak Arabic, I wasn't doing any translation work. I was simply invited here to check the English to make certain that this new interpretation of the Quran was easily understood. My work, of course, required that I read the Quran over and over again. Well, as you can imagine, having no knowledge of Islam, I had hundreds and hundreds of questions. I was shocked as I read to find that Jesus, peace be upon him, was often mentioned in the Quran. Jesus was presented as one of the greatest prophets. And even the story of the virgin birth was mentioned there. Many of the miracles that Jesus had done, I found them in the Quran. There were even a couple of Jesus' miracles mentioned in the Quran that were not mentioned in the Bible. Evenings were mostly spent alone in a bedroom that had been set up for me in Dr. Safi's office. At night, I would stand on the balcony of that building and I would look across a very busy boulevard to a mosque. And I would hear the calls to prayer. I would see men and women coming to, coming to the mosque and leaving the mosque. Children were playing football in the mosque parking lot. Except for the minaret, it appeared to me to look like a typical Christian church in America. My heart longed to be in that mosque. I felt compelled by God to go there. A few months later, I got up the courage to walk down the street and to knock on the door of Taqwa Mosque. Now, nobody knocks on the door of a mosque. You, normally, they just open the door and they walk right in. But I was not sure what I would, how I'd be received, so I was stood there knocking, knocking, knocking until someone came to the door. That person simply said, may I help you? <laughs> I said, my name is Samuel. I'm a Christian from the United States. Is it okay if I come inside? And that man, Shafiq Zuvia, who was the caller to prayer, he reached out and he hugged me and he said, of course, come in. I sat in the back of the mosque during prayer times for three days. I didn't understand what was going on. I saw men standing, bowing, putting their heads to the floor as the Imam led them in prayer. I had little knowledge about what was happening, but I felt God's presence in that mosque. And the men of Taqwa Mosque were so friendly to me. After three days, I asked Shafiq if he could teach me the first surah of the Quran, Al-Fatiha. This was a necessary element in praying the, four, the five daily prayers. I was memorizing sounds, but I didn't know what the sounds meant. So I started comparing them with an English translation I had and I realized that there was nothing in Al-Fatiha that was inconsistent with Christian teaching. There I read the encouraging words that God was the most merciful, the distributor of mercy and forgiveness. My heart was being strangely touched by the words of the Quran and the love displayed by the men of Taqwa Mosque. Dr. Sadiq Malki would later drive me to the Islamic Education Foundation in Alhamra, neighborhood of Jeddah, where I said, Al-Shahada. Mm -hmm.